No, not really an island. He lives here. He lives here. Um, he came about three months before me to the island. Um, yeah, and he's very lovely. So I've known you for three years. And for three years, you've been saying you want a man. <laughs> You're telling me that you now really have a man. Yes, it seems to. Yeah. yeah? I really have one. Is it kind of quite serious? I think so. Um, I always thought I'm absolutely unromantic and unemotional. Well, but probably I'm still sort of unemotional. Uh, I don't really, I'm not a crybaby. But um, I, I can see how romantic he is and that sort of gives you a warm feeling. And uh, so I like the romance in a way. You like the, the warm feeling? I like the warm feeling, yes. <laughs> So perhaps you are a romantic and have been all along. You've just never met the right guy. Maybe. So this is great news. Mm. <laughs> Would you ask him if we can meet him? I will. I will. <laughs> How's he getting on with Leo the dog? Uh, he, he told me that the first time that he came, uh, he was rather scared of Leo. By now, he loves him. He says Leo is just a member of the family, and Leo also is no problem with with Alistair. <laughs> stop, <I> it. <laughs> stop it! Stop it! Stop it! The most northwesterly of the islands is Briar, which has a population of less than a hundred. There's a church here, and a very small pub but really only one place for islanders to meet for parties and dances, the old community centre. But after half a century of almost constant use, the place was in danger of falling to pieces. So the islanders decided to try and raise the funds to build a new one. In less than a year, they'd managed to collect an extraordinary 70,000 pounds. That's nearly a thousand pounds per islander, just enough to get the project started. A well-known Briar resident, Marion Bennett, was there to see the old building demolished. Well done, boys. Let's raise our glasses and say thank you to the old community all centre the had the old for all the brilliant, brilliant times we had there. And to the new one. And to the new one. Cheers. <laughs> Today, David Easton is taking his new boss, Steve, on a high-speed trip across the water to see how things are developing on Briar. As always on Scilly, just getting from A to B depends on the weather and the tide, and takes a lot of time. Hello. Good morning. Hello. They're greeted by Marion's daughter, Charlie. There's no primary school in Briar now. There are no signposts here, so if you didn't know where the community centre is, you'd never find it. They've not got enough money to fit it out yet, but the shell of the spanking new building is almost complete. And it's got probably the finest view of any community centre in Britain. Oh, there's my mum. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. Wow. This is the main room. Yes, enormous. And um, we're going to hold all our social functions here, and it will be used for badminton and perhaps yeah. basketball. Good. In the room. Steve here, is amazed by what's been achieved. I'm really impressed what Marion's shown me, actually. It just shows you a little bit of faith in the community, having a vision together, just what can be achieved. I think it's marvellous. What is it about? Islanders do you think that when they need to do something they kind of get on and do it. They do, they? they do. I think that I think that they rely on each other for so many things. I mean, got the water just out there, you've got to trust each other. I think there is a great element of trust and love within within an island community. And this this is a good example of it actually, of being able to say, this is for our benefit, let's really work together for this. It's achievable. We can do it. That hall is a testimony to that. Yeah. David himself, though, appears distracted and doesn't seem to be joining in in his usual way. He's been waiting a long time for the weekend of his re-election and Steve knows exactly what he's going through. For David, it's a tense moment. He loves the sillies very, very much. It's been a very clear calling to him. I remember before he went, him saying to me how he, 
if he could get an opportunity, he'd love to be the minister on the sillies. And, and he wants to stay, doesn't he? He wants to stay. He wants to stay. And it, it, it's a rare bird. There's, I'm not sure that if they say they don't want him, that I've got somebody else who'll want to do that, because not everybody wants to be so isolated. The Reverends Donald and Margaret, meanwhile, are quickly slipping back into the familiar silly ways. There's only one shop where they're living over on Tresco, so today they've joined the weekly shopping boat to get their food supplies here on the main island of St Mary's. Throughout the year, there is always a boat on Thursdays from Tresco and Briar. Uh, when everything else has stopped, the Thursday boat is the shopping boat. And we still all come on Thursdays, even though there's a boat every other day in the summer. And if we come on a Thursday, then we can have our goods sent up on a Friday, so we don't have to carry them back. Oh, so they, they send them over on the they boat on Friday? send them over on the boat on Friday, yes. Yeah. It's very civilised yeah. down yes. here, isn't it? So it's, we it's shop and they drop. Yeah. Hello, Steve. How are you? We're OK, thank you. Two pork steaks, Two pork steaks please, steaks. Steve. Donald and Margaret first came to Scilly after Donald was paralysed by a stroke, which left him without the power of speech. But coming here to convalesce changed their lives. Scilly gave me back my life in a worthwhile manner. Here on the island and with its people, I found healing and the ministry that I thought had gone, uh, I got back in a new and very wonderful way and I've had a wonderful, wonderful 17 years. You have to wait for the islanders to take you on board, as it were. Uh, if you came and pushed your way in, that, that wouldn't make for happy relationships. We waited until people, <laughs> as we say, they picked us up and, and, and shook us like a bell, and they must have decided that we rang true. Uh, so they've opened up not just their homes, but their hearts and their lives to us. And over the years, we've had the immense privilege of sharing in their highs, the weddings, the christenings, the parties, but also the hard times of serious illness and then of, of, of death. That's a privilege that you can't really express in uh, any words cheaply. Donald and Margaret have much work to do here before they leave, not least drawing up plans for a lasting legacy of their extraordinary years on the islands. Across the harbour, Nigel is setting off to check the new lobster pots for the first time. He's sure the inscrutable totem will have brought him the luck he needs to bag his first lobster ever. Holding the fort up at the Airfare Cafe, though, Carol is not so confident. Is he actually quite famous for, for his exploits in trying to catch lobster? Uh, I don't know about famous, but I, he, people certainly laugh when they ask him how many he's caught. <laughs> People drive past and say, I got four today, Nige, five today, Nige. So, <laughs> I don't know about famous, but they all know how hard is trying. <laughs> One day we'll have shellfish for supper. One day. <laughs> Where's the first pot? Right. The first pot is just in here. There's a, a white, a big white boy with a little green one on. It'll be visible in a minute. There's one. And there's the other one. They're actually staggeringly close to the rocks. Got it. Feeling heavy? Yep. Let's have a look and see what's in. Crabs. Two or three crabs. No lobsters in that one. Oh, no, Never mind. One more. Things haven't got off to a promising start. Oh, yeah. Let's be 
feeling heavy? Oh, <laughs> as heavy as they always seem to be when they're under the water. I've got a lobster. I had a large lobster. Hey! <laughs> well done. That's it. Oh, yes. Woo. That is fantastic. Woo. Let's see if I can get him out. Oh, yes. There he is. There he is. That's a good sized lobby. It seems the symbol of fertility from the South Pacific has worked his magic at last. Beautiful colour. Can't laugh at me any longer. <laughs> Is Carol going to believe this? She'll think I borrowed it off somebody or stole it. <laughs> Done. Ta -da! <laughs> Carol. <laughs> I've just caught him. Oh, Shane, you put him back. Hello. Oh, put him back. He's called Gerald. <laughs> oh. Got a lobster. Oh, well it's lovely. Done. Thanks for the pots. That's brilliant. Three years. Come on. Let's go and put him in the fridge. Yeah. <laughs> Don't keep wafting him around. It's brilliant. <laughs> Down in the bar of one of the hotels behind the harbour, Heike has an appointment with the photographer who took the pictures of her and Sammy on the beach. As a single woman, Heike is used to being on her own, so she doesn't seem to mind that he's running late. At last, he arrives. His name's Alistair. Good to see you. And yes, it seems he's Heike's mystery boyfriend. <laughs> what you got? What you been up to? What have you been doing today? <coughs> Not have you had a, a good day? Made lots of money? I made two pounds. Two pounds. It's become the talk of the islands. Alistair and Heike have officially started dating. The question is, is this just a case of ships passing in the night? Or could this really be a long-term affair of the heart for the lonely island vet? In the next programme, as the season draws to an end, it's a worrying time for the spiritual life of Silly. Good morning. I'd like to welcome you here this morning to our Harvest Thanksgiving. The island's representatives gather for the crucial re-election vote. This meeting will determine David's whole future here on the islands. Well, good evening and welcome to your friends. It's good to see you here this evening. So let us pray. Oh God, as we meet together this evening within these four walls... But things don't turn out quite as expected. It's all change on the Isles of Scilly. If I could just ask everybody to raise their glasses. The much-loved retired priests Donald and Margaret are saying goodbye to the islands for the last time. It promises to be a very emotional occasion. We know we are triple blessed by the friendship that you've given to us. After three years on Scilly, Heike the vet has at last found herself a boyfriend. Her whirlwind romance with part-time photographer Alistair is the talk of the islands. Is it kind of quite serious? I think so. I, I can see how romantic he is and that sort of gives you a warm feeling. Is he sweeping you off your feet, though? Slowly, very slowly. <laughs> <laughs> I 
She's a hard nut to crack, I think. And it's a key moment in the life of the minister, the Reverend David. His boss, Steve Wilds, arrived from the mainland to supervise his re-election process. It's a bit unsettling time. You're never quite sure what's going to happen. I mean, I'm hoping and kind of assuming that I will be invited uh, again, but you just don't know, do you? I mean, you've done a really good job here, and the people love you here. You'll be fine. It's the end of a long season on the Isles of Scilly. It's not exactly been the greatest of summers, but at least it's ended well, with day after day of sunshine. There's also a visible sense of battening down the hatches for the winter months ahead. With fewer holidaymakers around, there's a sense of the islanders reclaiming Scilly for themselves. These are also momentous days in the life of the Methodist minister, the Reverend David Easton. His boss, Steve Wilde, the new head of district for the Methodists in Cornwall, has come over from the mainland to chair the crucial vote on David's future. But first, Steve's keen to meet some of the islanders. Good afternoon. Hi. You know Stephen Wilde, don't you? Yeah. Well, you will. Who's... Hey, how are you doing? Sunday sees the big harvest festival service in the chapel. With the season over, the locals seem in very good humour. There's an air of confidence and optimism for the future. David, in particular, looks very relaxed. What are these plums? I know. Look at the size. Lovely, aren't they? Fantastic. Yeah. Yes, well, you can grow anything here. These were grown on Sully. <laughs> it says so here. Country of origin. Isles of Sully, yes. Isles of Sully bananas. I've seen it all now. Steve's impressed by the unusual community spirit here. I think it's like going back to the 1950s. All communities used to be like this, and it's a shame we've lost this in England. Really rich, this, and caring and understanding each other and being prepared to be involved. The church on the islands has a real prominent place where, unfortunately, so, or, across the water, quite often, the church is disregarded or just put onto one side, really. And what we've got is really wonderful. It's something that everybody should experience. Have you got it? I'll stand here. Sunday will be a very busy day for David. After Harvest Festival, he's also officiating at another high-profile island event, the wedding of Sophie and Mark. I'm just hoping that the weather's going to be like this on the day. Oh, it'll be like this. It's always sunny in the Arvel City, so you'll be fine. I know. I'm hoping and praying for good weather, honestly. Mark's been busy through the summer seven days a week on the inter-island boats, and Sophie's been working around the clock in the tourist office. So now's really been the first opportunity they've had to find the time for their wedding. Mark and Sophie will be getting married in a private service in the tiny church on the remote island to the southwest, St Agnes. All their guests will have to travel here by boat. And it's nice to have it on one of the off-islands, really, because they don't obviously have as many weddings as St Mary's, and it's going to be rather nice going over on the boat and coming back. Today, Sophie's up at the little airport to greet her family and other guests who are flying in for the big day. Obviously, if you're going to have a wedding on an off-island and you've got guests going over there, the weather is absolutely critical in all of this. I mean, if it was really bad weather or wet, I don't know what they would do, apart from getting sick and getting very wet. You never know, it's a bit of a risk you take. So um, that's their choice anyway, but I hope they have a great day. Meanwhile, up on the largest of the remoter off islands, Tresco, a rather unusual meeting's about to take place. Ladies, 
it's good to see you back again. Always reassuring when people come back for a second bit of a course. You know, they thought maybe the first wasn't too bad. With their final departure from Scilly now imminent, the two retired priests, Donald and Margaret, know that for the long winter months, the off-islands will be without any resident priest at all. What can and what can't a lay worship leader do? Mm. You can lead a family or an all-age service, and we'll get back to all-age services later on this morning. We're training six lay people so that they can lead worship services, not obviously sacraments that need a priest. Uh, one of them is the island chiropodist, another is a receptionist from the hotel. They won't be trained to preach, but they can lead a half, 45 minute service of hymns and prayers and, and readings, maybe poetry, so that on those occasions when there isn't a clergyman available on one of the off islands, it doesn't mean that worship stops. Always start with a familiar hymn mm. or the tune mm. people know. Yeah. Never start with some new way yeah. out thing. No. Soon, Donald and Margaret will be holding their final service in the little church just down the road on Tresco. Summer's been a long time coming. One of the special guests at the service will be their good friend, the Reverend David, who's based on the main island, St Mary's. Donald and Margaret are confident that at least David will still be here when they're gone. Early next morning, and down at Old Town Bay, Hike is busy cooking breakfast for the new boyfriend, Alistair. Mm. Mm. Nice, but there are one or two hurdles to overcome if their relationship is to flourish. Alistair must establish a good rapport with a slightly unpredictable four-legged member of the household. Yeah. Right, you do realise I'm taking my life into my own hands here. Right, come on. Do you ever bath him or wash him or anything like that? No, a good rain.